Hi everyone, welcome back to the next video on the channel. Today we are going to discuss about the index property in the for each loop. If you are an experienced developer and you have already used this property then well and good. In case you are an intermediate or a beginner and you have not utilized the index property in the for each, today we are going to see how we can use it and what exactly it is. So we have seen that in UiPath we have one for each activity which is used to iterate the list and any item which is having a enumerable property. And then we have one more for each which is available to iterate wherever we have a data table, right? And this expects a data row. Now if you'll notice for both of these items there is an output property which is called the index and it starts with zero. So what is this property and how this can be used and how we can utilize that in UiPath Studio? That is what we are going to see in today video. So let's get started. I am in my UiPath Studio and today we are going to talk about the for each activity. So before starting let me quickly go ahead and take a for each activity. So if you will see we have two for each activity one is for the data table and other one is for the control and the workflow. Let me quickly drag and drop the both of them here. So let me first go through the data table one. So if you will see apart from all the settings there is something called index here. So this is what we are going to talk about today. What is this index and how we can use it. Next, if I quickly go ahead and drag one more for each, which is this one, which is under workflow. So if you will see here for this for each also, we have a one property called index. So today we are going to see why exactly this for each having this index and how can we utilize this in our process. To explain this further, what I have done in my project location, let me go here in the project location inside the data. I have kept an Excel, which I call the input Excel. So this Excel looks something like this. So in the sheet one, I have around 29 uh, records and then I have one more column, which is the I column, which is output. So now assuming that this is a business process and what I want to do, I want to write some data of processing each and every row. Assuming that once the row is completed successfully, I want to come back here and I have to write completed. Next, if I want to do here, what I want to do for the second row completed and if there is exception I want to write exception right so this is a normal process and we encounter this scenario many times that where based on some business logic we have to again come to the excel and type something in the excel again right so how do ideally we do it if we are not using the index property so if you are aware of the index property well and good but if you are not aware I would request you to watch the video okay so if we are not using the index property, what would be the logic actually be right? So we will initialize a variable. Uh, we will take, a, let's say, an int variable and we will initialize it with one. And then after each iteration, we will just increment the variable by one. And then we will just use this new variable to write again in the Excel, right? So there exactly what I have to do. I have to maintain a variable to maintain the count of the for each. But now with the help of this index property, I don't need to explicitly maintain a count. So that is what we are going to see today. So before that, let us try to build this use case and then you will totally understand what exactly I mean. Okay, so I will go here and first thing we want to read the Excel. So let me go ahead and take an Excel application scope. In case you don't know how exactly to read an Excel and what is this Excel application scope? Why do we have two read ranges here? So I have a dedicated video on my channel on all the Excel operation. I'll put the links in the description and you can refer that. Let me go ahead quickly and take an Excel application scope. I will point it to the data and the input file like this. Now the next thing is I want to read the data. So to read the data, we, we use an activity called read range. Since we are using the Excel application scope, we will go ahead and use this one, not this one. Okay, so I will go ahead and drag it here. Now what is the sheet name? Sheet name for me is sheet one and I want to read the entire range, right? So this is the entire range. So as a, if I specify here double quotes, that means it will read the entire range. Once the range is read successfully, where do I want to keep the data? Let me go here and I will write, I will create a data table called control K and I will write DT underscore, let's say input. Okay, so I have created a data table called DT input. Do my column has headers? Yes, we do have headers. So these are all headers. 
now let us see how exactly what is the next step right so once this data is successful for each and every row of the data i want to write something here without maintaining a external counter okay so how do we do that let me go ahead and take a for each activity now so i will use a for each activity so the same concept applies to both the for each so as of now since we are doing with a data table so i have to take this data table for each row otherwise this is applicable to wherever if you have an array list or you have a list of string or or anything which is having a enumerable property you will be able to use the index property okay so what is the data table so the data table is dt input because we have just read the data here right next what is the thing i want to do now this row will give me each and every row one by one okay so now let us assuming that i want to write completed to how do we write the data in the cell again we use an activity called write cell okay since write cell we are using the excel again we are going to use this write cell now the write cell will ask me okay which sheet we want to write the cell i am saying that i want to write the cell in the sheet one okay so sheet is sheet one but where exactly i want to write here so as a human if i ask you where exactly should i write the data for the first row you will say that you have to write in i2 right where should i write the next data it is in i3 where is the next you will say mukesh you have to write in i4 so if you will see i3 i2 i4 i5 i is constant and only this number is getting changed right so that is why in the previous so that is why if we are not aware of this uh, index based property what is happening that we have to maintain an external counter something like this so we used to made a counter and then we used to increment that counter and create that thing dynamically then at the end we used to increment that one but now if i ask you that where exactly we have to write the answer was in the column g h and i so this i is fixed for me so i will write it here i will say i okay now what is the first row so the first row will be given by this guy so the first row is 2 so i want to write it here i2 like this right so if i just type it here like this i2 it will work right but not every time the i2 will work right because that in the next iteration it would be i3 then i4 then i5 so what where would this variable come from so let me go ahead and take a assign activity okay and let me just create a variable I will drag and drop the assign activity here i will hit ctrl plus k and i will create a variable called counter okay now this counter will be of type integer 32 because since it is going to store one two three four so i will just make it to integer 32 okay now if i just write here like integer counter dot two string why we are specifying two string because this column is an this column range column expects the string variable and we have write dot to string now this counter variable can be used with the help of the for each row so if you will go here in the properties you will see this index is now a zero based index right so where what what does it mean it means that whenever you read this data in the data table so ui path will put an index zero here ui path will put an index 1 here ui path will put an index 2 ui path will put an index 3 like this so what it means that whenever you run this file in the data table you will have all this index inside this index but now where exactly is this index we have not stored it anywhere right so what i will do is i will store this index in a variable which we have created so that is int okay so we have created it inside here so let me just increase the scope of this to the entire sequence like this now this variable would be available to me here so what we are telling ui path that okay whatever index you are providing me i want you to store that index in which variable the int variable now this is one and i want to store the value in i2 so how much should i increase so if i just increment this by two i am getting 2 right so 0 plus 2 is 2 1 plus 2 is 3 so that will give me 3 so what i want to do that whatever index you give me ui path i just want you to increase the index by 2 and that way i will get my exact index so this i is fixed so it will be i and here like this and 0 plus 2 it will give me i2 then here it will be 
i3 and so on right so that is how we will be able to use it so ui path has only given me the index like this 0 1 and 2 right and where we have stored the index we have stored the index in a variable called integer counter right so this was the variable so what what next so integer counter okay now here what what we wanted to do we want to just increment this by 2 because our index in the excel is getting incremented with the help of 2 so first time it will be 0 so now it will come inside the loop and then the counter variable will be now 0 plus 2 is equal to 2 and it will go to the cell i2 and what is the value we want to write let's say we want to write let's say completed l e t e d completed okay so this completes the code let us try to understand what is happening here it will first read the data from the excel then it will read the range so the entire data will be available in the data table called dt data now each on every record that means the 30 records will now be iterated here for the first row now it is mentioned that it is a zero based index right so first time this in int counter would be zero then why we are incrementing it by two because we have seen here that the ui path will give me zero one two so since i require i2 i3 and i3 that's why so for example if i ask you what is this value so you will say this is i11 so for to make it 11 i have to add to it 2 to the 9 2 plus 9 equal to 11 similarly what is this value this is i22 so how do i make 22 20 plus 2 that's why i am just adding 2 here and once i got this counter i am just concatenating the i plus 22 that makes it i22 sheet 1 and completed so now let us quickly go and run this flow in the debug mode and let me click visible is okay it's done here let me go here and put a debugger and let us try to execute this in the debug mode and we will be able to see how exactly ui path is behaving okay and how exactly this index one is useful for us so let me go ahead and click on debug the file okay so the bot has started it will begin its execution now okay so the execution has started okay so now if i just open the data so this is my entire data table you can see the entire excel is available here now if you will see the int counter the default the first time it would be zero okay so let me go inside okay now the counter value would be two right so now the next it will write so now it was two so now the value it would write is i of two so the counter value was incremented to two so now it becomes i of two and now it will write completed in i2 let me go ahead and debug okay so let us go back here and if i see it has written i2 completed now what is the counter value now now it will come out of the loop okay i will click again now again the integer counter value is reset because we have passed the value at the this level so now the next for this loop as we have mentioned here so this value is now uipath has given me one so now it will make the value to three right and then it will write the value in i of three okay so now it will write in i of three similarly once the loop is completed it will again go out and now the value is two because it has fetched this record now this one okay so how do i know it is this record so if you will see here the value is 279 and something dollar million so if you will go here in the uipath studio here and if you will just analyze the row you can see the same record so see 279 dollar and this is the second this two is also coming here that means that this is the second row now we just want to make it to four so uipath will make it to two plus two because i want to write the value in i4 so it has incremented now the counter is four i4 and step into and similarly if i click on continue it will execute for the complete file and you can see a, the bot writing completed in each and every cell as per the requirement let us just wait for the bot to complete the execution okay so as you can see it has completed the execution and the process was successful with no exception at all okay so now if you will see here this thing was written completed 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 and if i go here i did not have to maintain the count externally i have just used this index okay now 
this was all about data table now if you want to do the same thing with this also so if you would have seen there is one more for each this one right so that basically is used when you don't want have a data table kind of thing and assuming that you are having a list of string or arrow of string so that time also what you can do you can make and use of this index property so using this index property you don't have to maintain the count so that is how you use the index property in the for each row and the normal for each where you don't have the data table now let us see do we have this thing available in while or do while what do you think so let me check i will print the i will drag and drop the next loop do while and we don't have this property right so that property is only applicable for the for each wherever you have the for each data table or the normal for each so here you can iterate anything and you can just use the index as we have shown okay so i will wrap this video here i hope you now understand what is the index property and how we can use that whenever we are using the for each loop thank you for watching if you like this video please do subscribe to the channel and happy automation